And in terms of this, like a lot of these are like the buzzwords that I hear uh, in these debates, moral equivalency. I never said they were the same. I, in fact, I think Israel's done much worse to the Palestinians than the Palestinians have done to the Israelis. So I'm not Oof. saying they're the same at all. And in terms of, uh, uh, well, I, you can react, it's kind of an objective fact, but look. No, in, in, uh, intention in, in when evaluating morality matters a ton. I mean, if, I, if I'm if i driving- Yeah, in, but if, you're just assuming what the intention is. I'm I, reading you their words of what if, their if intentions I, but are. But Dave, if I'm, if I'm driving in my car and I, I, I accidentally lose control of the car, the brakes go out and I kill 10 people, uh, versus if I'm driving my car and I see one person and I deliberately run over them, the, the latter case is a much worse human being deserving of uh, condemnation, even though in the yes, first case, difference... more people died. And I think people look at numbers and they say, Israel must be the bad guy here because of yeah, the Yeah, but this is, such a, this is so disanalogous. I mean, like, yes, obviously there's a difference between vehicular manslaughter and first-degree murder. Mm -hmm. However— And self-defense and murder, I would say. Is a yeah, a and self-defense—listen, th this is all the stuff. It's like, look, self-defense— just to be very clear about this here, okay, to break mm -hmm. down kind of these terms. If somebody broke into my house and points a gun at me and I shoot and kill that person, I can say, hey, I acted in self-defense. This guy was threatening me. Right. I, nobody would argue if an IDF soldier shot one of the Hamas militants on October 7th in Israel, no one would be sitting here going like, oh, my God, how could Israel do that? Mm -hmm. That would be legit self-defense. Don't say nobody, but now, yeah. Hold on. L let me just finish my Go point ahead. here. Now, if you, nobody, I think, is pretty fair on that, <laughs> but whatever. Anyway, if someone broke into my house, kills a family member of mine, and then runs out uh, into the world, and I go, I got to go get that guy because of self, I have to defend myself. Now, that, I might have a right to go get that guy, but that's not self-defense. That's not what self-defense is. That would be justice, that would be revenge. What if he keeps firing at what, you? Yeah, let me just finish my point, okay? Because you just told uh, me to not interrupt you. So what we're talking about now, even if you're just talking about Israel going and getting the people responsible for October 7th, that's not self-defense. You can call it justice, you can call it revenge, but it's something else. Now, if that person who just came over in my house and killed one of my family members goes back to his house and I know that his kids, his wife, his aunt, his grandma are all in there and I say, I'm going to blow up the house and kill all of them because I want to get that one guy who came over here and killed somebody. I have committed not vehicular manslaughter, but murder in the first degree, cold blooded murder. OK, so. I'm just saying, I know things are a little bit different when we're talking about uh, different uh, countries, even though Gaza is not exactly a country, but I'm just saying, invoking self-defense to justify what is actually murder in the first degree is just pure trickery. Like, that's not a real comment on what's going on. I think you're it is. I can with explain anyone's it. real objection. It, uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. I would say you're stopping the continuation of things. It's not just going into the house. And this this really boils down to a lot of this conversation boils down to the morality of war to begin with, because it's not just a bunch of random individuals fighting. We have governments that have a responsibility to seek out justice and defend their citizens. And I would say it's not just somebody committing an, a violent act against you, but threatening to do so over and over again. And under that duress, a threat of violence is just as justified to defend yourself as actual violence in real time. Would you agree to that? No, not necessarily. If I put a gun I mean, up and I say, I'm going to shoot you and I'm yeah, going to yeah, keep yeah. doing it, you have a right to defend yourself. Right. But if a, if a homeless guy on the street goes, uh, goes I'm going to kill you and your whole family, mm -hmm. and I just murder that guy, mm -hmm. you'd be like, no, that's not justified just because he made some threat that he has no ability to follow right. through on. Right, right. And so, the, but, like, but no, just to, it's, it's not. I can understand that, but I'm just, to, to, yes, to continue my point, it's not that they just commit this act and then go back to their business. If they stay in that family's house, Outfit the windows of that house so that they can successfully shoot RPGs at soldiers trying to do special operations and trying to gather intelligence. And they use these houses and create military installations out of these uh, homes. Then, then you do have the right to – that is self-defense to, to – to, and blaming Hamas for putting these people in harm's way, for, putting, for implicating themselves and embedding themselves and exploiting that asymmetry. Um, and Israel makes efforts to minimize civilian casualties, but it's not accountable to Israel to do that when it is fighting uh, it's a, a good, war defense. It's a good, 
it's a first off that does not describe the vast majority of the cases of people being killed in Gaza but okay in that hypothetical I think the way you put it is an interesting one they're exploiting that asymmetry yes. that's right because this is an asymmetrical war okay do you think Israel exploits the asymmetry at all do you think they exploit the the fact that they have way more power than the Palestinians Dave Dave Israel in terms of this claims about genocide and being leveled at Israel which I think is a smear just think about it this way Israel could level the place tomorrow. They could have done it on October 8th and 9th and level the entire country. They could do it, but they won't do it. And Hamas uh, can't do it, but they would do it. If they had the military capacity, they would kill every Israeli tomorrow. Do you not agree with that? I think okay, so I just want to jump in yeah. here because I, I do want to ask a question about that because I have shown aerial footage. There have been Doctors Without Borders that have gone there that have worked in tons of war zones and have written pieces saying that this is not a regular war. Like, it looks like they are raising the place. And when I see, again, of course, someone will always say that's propaganda here. But when I look at it, it does sort of look like they are, they want these buildings fully collapse. And then it doesn't, it's not helpful to the pro-Israel side when Jared Kushner jumps up and talks about how profitable the property would be. And so I do want to jump into kind of what Israelis are currently protesting. I actually got a phone call today from an Israeli uh, newspaper who was saying we would like a comment from Candace because the Israelis are believing that some of this was a false flag. He had interviewed some Israelis on the ground and they think that, you know, th there's a larger plan that's at bay. Now, that sounds crazy and t unless you read the Jerusalem Post article, which came out earlier this week. I covered it on my show where they are saying that there is no question that the Israeli government knew that Hamas was going to kidnap 250 people. Um, I want to read it, read it to you verbatim here because I don't want to miss. I don't want to misquote the Jerusalem Post. Obviously, none of us would say the Jerusalem Post is anti-Israel or anti-Semitic. Um, the headline read: "The IDF knew of Hamas's plans to kidnap 250 before October 7th attack. The IDF had precise information about Hamas's intentions, but due to prevailing conceptions in the security establishment and possible negligence by officials, the warning signs were not acted on." Now you can go ahead. You can read that article, guys. We'll drop it in the link. And I do want to say this is kind of gets into what Charlie Kirk was saying instantly about any of us who have been to Israel, just like it's a very long time for them not to respond. I've been to Israel, you've been to Israel. It's very small. And there's just, it feels like there's a military presence every five feet. It's actually scary going into the country. They're so secure. You see women holding, you know, massive guns pointing down at you in the airport. And so people were questioning whether or not they allowed this attack to go on and they had this intelligence and they wanted it to go on for larger regions. Um, additionally, we know that Egypt said that they had handed Israel a report and told them that there was something that was being planned. Ami, do you look at that and say, well, that's all a conspiracy and that's crazy? Or do you think... That's interesting. I just like like to hear your feedback on that. What I would say to that uh, is obviously everybody on the pro-Israel side, especially, wants a full investigation after, as to how something like this could have happened. The fundamental obligation of any government, first and foremost, before any other policy, and we all would agree here, is to protect its citizens. And everybody acknowledges that security failure. To infer this uh, nefarious incendiary reason, to me, sounds very much like 9-11 truthers saying, hey, there was a lot of money to be made from the Iraq war and we needed a reason to go in. So let's just let the planes hit the towers. And it's not really Saudi Arabia and it's not really the hijackers. It was an inside job. So it, to me, it has as much credibility the, uh, upon hearing it for the first time from you here, that idea sounds about as credible as as a 9-11 truth or conspiracy. Yeah, sorry, I should add more here because the article was a bit longer. And I didn't mm -hmm. realize this was the first time you were hearing yeah. it because it did, it did just come out yesterday. Okay. So that makes total sense. It's that, it's that they actually have the document. So a newly surfaced document has yeah. revealed, and this is the reason why the Israelis are protesting, has revealed that the IDF and the intelligence systems had detailed knowledge of Hamas's plan to raid Israel and kidnap 250 people weeks before the October right. 7th uh, massacre. Uh, uh, the document which was compiled in the Gaza division, outlined Hamas's intentions and was known to top intelligence officials, according to a report by Can News. Uh, and, and then it goes into further detail. So I think, and by the way, quite ironically, yeah, 9-11, uh, 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 there were a lot of questions as well, USS Liberty. And I, I just so you know where I stand on this, I do not think that false flag attacks are impossible. In fact, I know they're not impossible because of the CIA declassified documents pertaining, pertaining to Operation Northwoods um, and JFK's refusal uh, to allow them to stage a false flag attack of the CIA on American soil to go to war with Cuba. So if we accept that... 
intelligence agencies, and I'm referring to America mm -hmm. now, have attempted those things in the past. And now they have documents alleging that they absolutely knew they knew something. Now, they could have been negligent. That's entirely plausible. I do think, given a lot of the rhetoric, and I definitely, I personally don't think Bibi Netanyahu is a good person. I do think he's quite nefarious, uh, given statements he's made in the past. And uh, he's been caught on camera talking about, don't worry about America, and we're going to do this to the Palestinians. Turn the cameras off. It's I just don't see him as a good guy, and I think that that's what a lot of people are questioning. Like, why do Jewish Americans feel that they have to defend this guy because simply because he's the the leader of Israel? There are all, always bad leaders. I wouldn't defend Joe Biden against crazy uh, stuff. Understood. You know what and I, mean? I think it's important to make those distinctions. I would simply say that you know, uh, someone I think we all like, uh, Thomas Sowell, is always asking when you're evaluating things compared to what. You know, it's not like I can stand by everything Bibi Netanyahu has said or would defend him, and yeah. not everyone should. But compared to what, when we're looking at the situation, uh, the leadership of the opponents and the enemies of Israel have said far, far, far worse, worse, mo more disgusting, more genocidal things than I think anyone in Israel has ever said. Um, and it's evidenced by the fact that you, you, you just you don't see the same kinds of you don't see uh, IDF going in to uh, a, a Palestinian home, dragging a body through the streets of Tel Aviv to mobs of cheering crowds. 